I'm Laura Vinroot Poole. For over 20 years, I've owned Capital, an internationally recognized specialty store in Charlotte, North Carolina. On this podcast, we unlock the stories of people's lives through the stories of what they wore. These aren't conversations about fashion. These are conversations about people. Everybody wants to know her Pamela Kelly has been one of my best friends for over 30 years, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity to offer you a window into Southern men's style through Hamlin's hilarious and sharp-witted lens. I hope you'll enjoy this crash course on all things Southern. Pam Leno Kelly. Laura Benry Poole. Welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> How do we know each other? Where did we meet? Well, uh, we met in a the lower right dining hall of a little school <laughs> called Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts, when your mother asked me where the cream was for her coffee. And I said... How did you know where the cream was? Well, because I went to school there, as as did you. Um, we did not know each other at the time. It was Parents Weekend. The first year we were there, Parents Weekend, like in October or something. It's a perfect New England, like Robert Frost poem day. Yeah, I remember it, actually. Blue sky, leaves Beautiful. were orange, brown, you know yellow and your mom walked by and said son and she said son and I thought okay she's not from New England she said son is there cream over there I said yes ma'am she said oh my gosh where are you from you just said yes ma'am we're from Charlotte come meet my daughter and yeah that never works and so we met and there you go we've been friends literally ever since 31 years 31 years and we hadn't met before then we hadn't met before then because, mm. as you well know, our school was rather large. Right. We had 1,200-plus students, and <laughs> we were divided into what are called clusters for your listening audience, which is designed to make a big school seem smaller. And you were in Pine Knoll. Yeah, Pine Knoll. And I was West Quad North, North which yeah. are geographically far apart. And so, no, we had not met until right. then. Huh. Yeah. We were fast friends. I mean, it was love at first sight. <laughs> well, I think it was kind of like, oh, great. Who's this Who's this guy? And I was like, who's this girl? Okay, well, at least she's from Charlotte. And, you know, I'm from <laughs> Beaufort, South Carolina, fellow traveler southerner yeah. in the wilds of New England together. And so that was, I think, the initial bond was, yeah. you know, oh, well, you know, we speak some of the same language. Speaking of fashion, too, I, I do remember that first parents weekend when my parents got there. I think it was October, right? It was, it was the third weekend in October every year. So we'd been there a month and a half. And I felt so relieved that my parents were there. And the first thing I did when we got there was go shopping. There was a Ralph Lauren outlet outside of Andover. And I wanted to go there immediately because I felt so out of place with all of these, you know, kids from... Upper East Side of Manhattan and Greenwich, Connecticut, and I, I was like, I really needed some tweed and some black watch plaid <laughs> and some cable knit sweaters, and so that honestly was the very first thing we did when, when my parents got there because I was like, oh my god, I'm not prepared for this. So my parents, that's funny. I had no idea that that's what y'all did because we got you did the, the same thing. We got in the rental car and drove to Freeport. Did you to, really? To Yes, we drove to L.L. Bean because my parents, because I. so funny. So the Beaufort, South Carolina in 1972 <laughs> when I was born had one, had three stores, but we always drove to Charleston or Savannah to shop. And where would you shop? What was the. Well, in, in Charleston, it was Jack Crawcheck. I mean, that was the, yeah. for men. That was right. the be all end all for men. And then my mother would go to Elza's, and I mean, that was it for women. And then everybody for shoes went to Bob Ellis. I mean, right, it was kind sure. of the, you've heard this story before. So that's, <laughs> I lived that story. You lived that story. So <laughs> I, I arrived at Andover with clothes from Bob Ellis. I mean, shoes from Bob Ellis yeah. and pants and sweaters and everything from Jack Crawcheck. And it actually was when you said black watch, I was like, oh, I kind of had those pants before I showed up, <laughs> which is a very sort of mainline southern, you know, what? people outside of the South would call preppy look Yeah, stores. I mean, I think I had pink Azads and... Sure, lots of pink and green. Yeah. But we got in the car and drove to Freeport. That's so funny. I mean, that was that very weekend, and <laughs> I 
And did y'all spend the night? How long? No, did it Freeport's take? close. Okay. Kittery, Maine, was where there were tons of outlets, and yeah. then Freeport is not that far. God, that's funny. And what did you get? <laughs> you a saw duh, me. the duck boots. <laughs> well, duck. I already had duck boots. Those, those we already. I had, had those too. Yeah, that was the one thing I was prepared for <laughs> New England yeah, with. One of the people who got me to apply to Andover was like, "Well, your clothes are all wrong. You need this, this, <laughs> and this." So, I, she advised we needed the duck boots. Yeah. So the duck boots, but I bought. Which are like really not that great because they're freezing they're I mean, freezing <laughs> and they slip <laughs> yeah. after a while yeah the exactly. they're snow. not really good for snow but you know the coolest thing about ll <laughs> bean is do you know you can return things that fall apart from ll bean for the rest of your life they have I a could, lifetime if i found those boots i could take them back tomorrow <laughs> we all had them there were these navy sweaters with these two white dots oh god i love this and i i, I wish i had yours i would I, I, you wore it all the time i don't know where it is that and i then, had my brothers i stole my brothers of course you did and then that but i what i didn't buy this and then about Two weeks later, I bought an Irish fisherman sweater oh. from Threads of Ireland. Trust me, I know that sweater. <laughs> <laughs> in Andover. Because you wore it literally every day. Uh, I think every day. All and, and through college. Through college. I still have it. Um, <laughs> my eldest daughter wears it now. I if, would steal that thing if I saw it. I would swipe it, <laughs> swipe it in a second. I've got it, and it's the best. <laughs> it's the warmest thing I still own. It still fits, surprisingly. And it's weirdly soft. It's weirdly soft. And if I could find, I had a... You might remember this, a red and white uh, yes. striped Turtle turtleneck neck. that I yeah. kind of was kind of known for. I mean, <laughs> where, what wore the hell out of that? Was that L.L. Bean? That was from the Brooks Brothers on Newberry Street in Boston. <laughs> oh, my God. Because Brooks Brothers was a revelation because we, I mean, we didn't have, Brooks Brothers was not a southern right. store back then. I mean, if you went and it to it. it was L- such a good store. Still is. Day. But Look, it was really good in the um, day. Dear listener, if you could see me now, everything on my <laughs> back is from the Brooks Brothers in Charleston or the Brooks Brothers outlet in right. North Charleston. Oh, I love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, and then what about the, the Andover shop? It was a great shop. I had a charge account. What, oh were, my my, what were my parents <laughs> thinking? So they're awesome. like, they're like, well, in case you need any clothes, here's your charge account. Uh, and it's still in existence. And it's, it's the Andover shop is a, it's, it's a fabulous it's store. It's a great store. Yeah. And they don't just sell things that are with the colors of our alma mater. It's more than blue and black. I yeah. would love to go there now and shop. One of the biggest insults of my life, but also one of the biggest compliments of my life was at Andover. Our friend James McLean called me a bitch in boys' clothes. <laughs> oh, that sounds just like young Master <laughs> and McLean. I, I was so taken aback. Well, I mean, first, t- to be called a a, the a B bitch word. was yeah. really yeah, but the boys' clothes part I I didn't understand it for a second. But I had been borrowing my brother's clothes my whole life. I have an older brother, and then you my do? yeah, sure, and then mama. my boyfriend's clothes, and and that's sort of my real comfort zone is like boys like painters pants and navy Levi's cords. Duh, love. Would you like to come raid your closet? Raid, raid the drawers. I don't think it would, drawers. I don't think your clothes would fit me, but. <laughs> Now I really like go with it. I'm like, yeah, that is actually my style. That's what I love. But at the moment, it I had no idea me. James called James you McLean. It, yeah, James, if you're listening, it doesn't surprise me that you <laughs> said that because it sounds just like something. It was true. You would have said, yeah, 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 it was on point. So Hamlin, you're from Beaufort, South Carolina. Born and reared. Not Beaufort, North Carolina. Not Beaufort, but Beaufort. Beaufort. Both, which, na- <laughs> both names for the Duke of Beaufort. But South Carolina with Doesn't its... Doesn't know how to pronounce things No, well. no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's truly an American story. We had so many French Huguenot immigrants mm. in the Low Country that to fit in, they anglicized everything. So, oh, how interesting. So that's why there's a street in Charleston that's Legree Street mm-hmm. and not Laguerre, because if it, you were in France, it'd be Laguerre. Right. But it's Legree. Everything is anglicized. That's and so, so Beaufort was the correct British pronunciation, but it's Beaufort. A uh-huh. um, little nasally sounding. <laughs> but that, yeah, born and reared, was the second or third child to be delivered by an actual OBGYN. Um, that's how <laughs> really? small Beaufort was and, um, in 1972. And it was the perfect place to grow up. Yeah. And so, what was and, your uniform as a child? Well, which, which stage of childhood? Because uh, there's, we, we had, I mean. But we, most of the time it was summer there. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> it's still hot. I mean, in the summer it was camp shorts that had the little zipper the little, on the left and side. And the little, like, hook on and it, And a hook right? so you could attach your Swiss what, Army what knife. Did you, or, or a rabbit's foot. Or if you were lucky, Laura. <laughs> and that and t 
t-shirts and then if what you kind were, of t-shirts you know just really probably awesome ones with like mickey mouse on them right. and the, or that said star wars yeah cool stuff i had an awesome one that said coke <laughs> like for coca-cola coke adds life to everything nice of course it yeah of course because it does because it does <laughs> we had those sweet matching lacoste shorts and shirts that, like you'd have blue shorts and a blue shirt yeah and then if you were really cool and your parents loved you a lot you OP got shorts. to wear well, that was later, but okay. you got to go to the department stores like Belk's and okay. buy Garanimals. Really? If you were really cool. And I thought that was like an 80s thing. I thought that was a 70s thing. I don't know. I, we never got <laughs> to wear them because my mother thought they were tacky. So, well, so it, I thought it they didn't were tacky matter. Too. It didn't matter, but I really wanted to like you put your lion with your lion and, and your zebra <laughs> with your zebra. Nobody remembers Garanimals because. No, I remember it, but I remember I would never put that, I would never wear that. I can't. See. You were. So, that was not something you would wear. We weren't allowed to wear it. I thought it was cool. <laughs> I, I, there was a Benji Burris. If you're listening, you got to wear gray animals. You I were, love it. You were. You were. And you showed us the lions. It well, was. It was really cool. Well, and then my mother would say that is ticky tacky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we wore, and a lot of, I mean, we were the originators of the Birdwell bathing suits. For sure. Still wear them today. Navy? Navy, red, green, yeah. and then. Did you have like a whole sleeve of them? I all like two or three and just wore them okay. nonstop. And that's back when the zippers were Velcro, and then they would get yeah. really nubby by the end and not work. So can you'd I, be a little flashy. But living in Beaufort, can I, I mean, did you sweat in those? Because they don't breathe. I mean, no, because <laughs> you weren't wearing a shirt. That's all you had. You had nothing. <laughs> that's all you wore. Okay. That's all you wore. I mean, we were. We are. We were the color of beetle nuts. I mean, we were brown. I mean, and yeah. I'm blonde haired and blue eyed. I'm sure skin <laughs> cancer is in my future because we were we were outside all the time. We were in the river, as we say, yeah. being in the boat or on the beach or in the pool. We were tan. My hair was green from the chlorine <laughs> the in the same. pool, and my nose bled from the skin peeling <laughs> off of it. I mean, that was and that would be from May to October. Absolutely. And then we the, another thing we would have to go, as I said, to Charleston to get fitted for what we call church clothes. Yes, church and, clothes. you know, khakis and blazers. Yeah. And the tweed, the, the herringbone tweed blazer that you could wear in the winter. Right. And then we always were made to wear itchy wool pants. I don't know why they did that to boys. Like gray? Gray wool pants. Yeah. They were itchy. Did and you ever have gray like, wool shorts. We wore those a lot. Really? With, with socks. long socks? When we were really little. And what kind of shoes? Like penny loafers? Buster Brown, Buster Brown brown shoes or b black shoes, but I mean that's Buster Brown was the brand. And, <laughs> and then and then did you? That's when you started with like uh, LL Bean with blue. Was it bluechers or uh, oh, bluechers? Those were the those, those were the, the best. Those were they? the best. I mean, and bluechers. And then it, they're bluechers bastard children camp mocks. Still wear them, and I get made fun of. And Mark you, McNary makes the best new version of them. There you go. They're really good. So I was at Whole Foods in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, not too long ago, and this person, whom you know, but whom shall remain nameless, <laughs> yelled at me across the way, oh my God, are you wearing camogs? What is it, 1986? <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I, I mean, wish it were. Yeah, wish, well, not, no, maybe, maybe not, but, um, you know, it, they never, it. Get, they never go out of style. No, they're so good. Tell me about your dad's style growing up. Did you learn about style from your dad, or was it more just you had to do things because your mom told you you had to wear, this is what, I mean, you're three boys. We Yeah, so, dear listener, I'm one of three three boys. Uh, I'm <laughs> the, the eldest. I'm the eldest. My brothers and I fall into every birth order pattern. I mean, we are like, <laughs> if you read one of those books about birth order, they yeah. could put me, you are Arthur, definitely. my middle brother, and Wade, my youngest brother, and we would fit. <laughs> but so my father is an attorney. Mm. He went to the Citadel mm -hmm. and he was in the United States Marine Corps. Oh, God. So, they, I mean, it wasn't so much that it's uniforms. You yeah. have, this is the uniform of the day. This is what we wear. Yeah. He was always dressed for work i mean you know there was no such thing as casual friday no no and no. my dad's um, almost 80 he still wears a full suit and right at the right. office at seven when so <laughs> going back to how we started this conversation going to look at andover you you go and you tour right. and we arrived on a january day it was it is right after their winter break it was snowy it was super cold and dad is wearing a pinstripe suit <laughs> that is a three-piece suit. He's got the vest on because it, really? well, it was cold. And then he's got a huge overcoat on mm -hmm. and a muffler and gloves and a wool hat. I mean, he looked like something out in, you know, the 50s because, you know, men's styles. Yeah. We don't change as much as y'all do. No, you don't. Uh, we really don't. But And then I was in my navy blazer and khaki pants and we got out of the car and dad's like fix your tie boy because <laughs> it was it had gotten crooked in the car with the seatbelt and i was like you know looking yeah. in the mirror fixing the tie and he's like 
I can't believe you don't have a top coat. That's because that's <laughs> what you <laughs> and or any and you're not wearing any cover, which is the Navy term for a hat. You uh-huh. know, so are you really? yeah, because the Marine Corps still uses. I mean, Marines are hardcore. I mean, yeah. you know, Navy people are hardcore. Yeah, my they still, yeah, they they still use the terms. It's like, you know, hit the deck. Yeah, <laughs> where's the head? Get, yeah. get out yeah, of the yeah. galley. You know, yeah. where's your cover? So we got out of the car that day, and I just I the the image. It was a bluebird day in terms of the. St- the sky, but it was super cold. Uh-huh. Breath is coming out. I'm adjusting my tie in the and he makes the comment about cover. So to answer your question, dad always wore the same thing every day, but it depended on the season. Like as soon as Easter came around, here comes the seersucker. Right. Here comes the poplin suits. And here. go to hell pants. Explain what go to hell pants Dad, are. no, my father would never. He, no. He, he, well, mine wouldn't either, but no, my brother No, but did. so go to hell pants, I love them. It's, it's <laughs> pants that when you put them on, you're basically telling the world you go to hell because <laughs> they can be made out of 50,000 different types of mattress uh, patches, yeah, patches or you went to the Lily Pulitzer store in Savannah and got them. Right. I mean, you know, things like that. Oh, um, my dad would never have no, worn no, no, that. It's crazy. too crazy. Yeah, Super too conservative. But <laughs> my dad also still, he doesn't wear a tie anymore, but he still flies in a blazer. Oh, you my know? dad does too. Are well, you kidding? And, well, so do I. I to, <laughs> to, to be honest, I mean, my children are always laughing. They're like, "Hurry up, Dad!" Because I'm putting the blazer in the overhead, you know, yeah. thing next to the lady right. in her oh, yeah. juicy couture sweatsuit. <laughs> her pajamas. What? People wear full-on well, pajamas now. They and snuggies and to the grocery oh, store. My God. I mean, it's the most unattractive thing it about bizarre current American society. I, I don't know what happened. I, um, I don't either, actually. <laughs> So a year ago, about the um, in the winter, I'd g- gone to do something. Then I get a call from my amazing bride, Mary Perrin. Can you run by the grocery store? I run by the grocery store. There are three College of Charleston students walking through the Harris Teeter on East Bay Street in Snuggies. In and Snuggies, in are like Snuggies, the whole, like they're like a sleeping bag, right? Yeah, but they're wa- <laughs> I mean they're wearing them as their coats, <laughs> and then they've got their flannel pajama bottoms and basically scuffs on. I mean it was, That's and it's nice. eleven thirty in the morning, and it's I know like, they sleep later than we do, but come on, people, <laughs> you're wearing Snuggies in the grocery store, <laughs> and it's still I mean in Charleston people still kind of dress a little bit. I mean not yeah. everything is athleisure wear and casual. Yeah, you know shorts and t-shirts all the time. No, I think people in Charlotte, people in the South dress and i think it, it might be a holdover from a time when we nobody had anything so you had to look good you were making dresses out of your curtains you mean no not <laughs> <laughs> not, not quite scarlet but um <laughs> if you don't have anything and all you've got left is your manners and you know the family home that's been there five generations you right. still gotta look good right and presentable right. even yeah, though yeah. even though you can't look like somebody even though you can't paint the house you know. <laughs> You can still look like somebody. <laughs> Your wife, Mary Perrin, I sold her a Lily Pulitzer dress. <gasps> For your rehearsal dinner and Phillips Place, in Phillips Place, and stuck a and I, and I stuck a matching Lily tie in in the bag for for you to wear. You wouldn't let me pay for it either. <laughs> do you hate me for that when you look at pictures, or do you love me? No, I <laughs> love it. I mean, the, so the dress, Mary Baron still has the dress, and it's funny you mentioned the tie because it hangs on the little tie rack in my <laughs> closet, and I see it every day. I don't wear it every day, but I do wear it in the summer with like a navy blazer. I love it. I love a lily tie. Lily is pretty, still pretty. Like it's Charleston, pretty cool. Charleston's a pretty Strong. hot lily yeah. market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, tell me about Southern style. Like, what what do you think Southern style is? Oh, that's hard because there's so many. I think that's an unfair statement to say Southern style because people outside of the South assumes we're some sort of monolith yeah. that everybody looks like an episode of Matlock yes. or Andy Griffith <laughs> or Designing Women. But I mean, it used to be, and I don't think it's that as much anymore because of the internet and everybody on social media but people in charleston did not look like people in columbia and people in columbia didn't look like people in charlotte and so there's still there was sort of a regionalism about what people wore but i think we're better dressed than the rest of the country i do too i mean don't tell anybody (laughs) um because I i think we care yeah and not everybody wears all black. Well, all I was going to say, time. I think we're, we're really not afraid of color, but more than that, I've always thought we're not afraid of standing out. We're not afraid of being seen because we're very sure about who we are. And I think that that's unusual. I mean, I look at old pictures from that hang on like my parents' wall and you see pictures of like great grandparents and they look 
they look pretty darn good. Yeah. I mean, they don't. I mean, I don't think they were on the pages of whatever fashion magazines were in <laughs> vogue at the time. But I mean, ooh, just realized that pun I just made there. But um, <laughs> you know, they people looked good, and but also the things have changed because people used to put on coats and ties every morning, right, to go walk the farm or right. to do you know sweaty stuff. But they were still you know, kind of decked out. and What do you, what does Southern style mean for men? And what are some of the quintessential kind of Southern pieces for men? Well, we do, we still are stereotypical in the sense that, I mean, come Easter, the seersucker is out. And you love your seersucker. Because it's flipping hot. I love it. I love it. But also it doesn't wrinkle. It doesn't, and it's hot. And you, and you, know, you know, the biggest misconception is linen. They think we love linen. I hate linen. Linen people, wrinkles. Yeah. People in the South do actually, actually don't like linen. I like linen shirts i like short, linen sheets that well <laughs> duh but i like linen shirt short sleeve linen shirts in the summer when it's really hot if you have to go to something okay like the standard charleston party scene a button down <laughs> shirt and khakis and some shoes alligator belt alligator belt oh, white sh- bucks white bucks i love my white bucks yeah my so, husband does too so the listeners out there who might not know what white bucks are they're white shoes with new buck suede. new buck suede mm-hmm. on them and they were made popular in the 1920s by bankers in New York City and in, huh. and lawyers in Philadelphia and then you would wear them all summer and up there it would be Memorial Day to Labor Day uh-huh. here it's Easter to Labor Day right. and at the end of the summer they would be sort of dingy and gray and you'd have to get out this block and <laughs> rub it's a, it's like a pumice stone right. but you rub your bucks huh. and of course my wife gave me one of those because you, you have to rub them rub them rub them so they gets the dinginess <laughs> off of them but I wear mine like a dog those shoes so you have the same it's the same rule as white shoes which by the way I do not wear white shoes ever but you're only allowed to wear between Easter and Labor Day that's what my dad said. So, yeah. You know, yeah. And then. Um, and seersucker, the, too. You can't wear that. Come Labor Day, you got to put right. away, which is stupid. Cause I know, because it's, it's still hot. It's hot. Nine, it's like it's hotter, hotter than ever, actually. September. Well, and then the other thing for so women hot. is um is velvet in, in the South, that you only wear velvet between Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day. Lent. you got to put yeah. it away by Lent, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but so, so seersucker is a big thing. White bucks. Tucking your shirt in. I mean, that sounds really sort of pedestrian but that's that's sort of a southern thing and now yeah. it's going away because well, I mean, uh, every, untuck it. <laughs> every, is that your worst nightmare everyone's untuck it? everyone's wearing their untuck it shirts <laughs> and their skinny jeans and it's every time changed. i hear that commercial i'm like wh- why would you even what does that mean why are you saying the, the perfect untucked shirt i don't understand tuck your shirt in dude yeah just do well, and I think that's a holdover from my father's military. You know, you For sure. you, you don't just tuck your shirt; in, you tuck it in the right way right, and exactly. do the crease <laughs> along the side, so it's you've got the perfect tuck. And you know, and that's he also had the citadel training for yeah. that too. Which and is I know a, you, I know you make your bed the same way too, don't you? Yeah, we right. um, and the citadel, of course, dear listener, is a, the military college of South Carolina. It's, it was founded in the 1840s to sort of be the southern uh, antidote to West Point, right? Um, where my grandfather know, went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There you go. But it's still, I mean, I live two blocks from the Citadel, and it's, you know, we hear the bugles in the morning and tap, and, and revelry in the morning and taps at night. And that's so funny, but you're, and are you awake before it? Uh, yes. Often. You're an early riser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite thing about Southern women? Oh, dear God. <laughs> well, you know, everybody thinks the South is that Southern women are these demure, quiet little things. <laughs> ha. The South is the only um, matriarchal part of the country yeah i mean re- it, it, women run everything in the south yes uh, y'all let whether a, you know it or not whether you know it or not i mean and i think my favorite thing about southern women is every woman in my family and every southern woman i've known has been a steel fist and a velvet glove i mean just <laughs> crushes it and yeah. but you don't even know you're being destroyed <laughs> <laughs> or directed, crushed yeah. or directed or being led a certain way. <laughs> Southern women are resilient beyond belief mm-hmm. and always have been. And But really just y'all, y'all run our lives. We do. You do. You do. <laughs> you do. And I'm, I'm, I'm growing up in a household with three boys. My poor mother was much beleaguered because she was the only, you know, XX chromosome in the house. <laughs> but things have changed genetically because – 
I have two girls. My brother Arthur has two girls. My brother Wade has two girls. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And so we are all surrounded. That's so funny. By, wo- by women, it's exhausting. I I had <laughs> no idea all the drama that comes along with rearing girls. Well, and Mary Perrin's one of three girls. My wife is one of three girls. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with fashion, with your girls, I mean, was that a new? Did you have a lot to learn when they were born? And what? Did, and what did they wear? I mean, I thought. All we had to do is buy some smock dresses, and that's it. And, you know, Feltman Brothers right. day gowns, which are, you know, the same day gowns that you and I were put yes, in when I we still, were little. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had no clue. <laughs> no clue. Do you know my Feltman? I have to tell you, it's him on my Feltman Brothers day gowns. I had them on my Madame Alexander baby dolls. Pussycat was one of them, and Victoria was the other. And so after I wore them, I put them on my dolls. And then when I had Fifi, I had to take them off my dolls to put them on my child. I hope they went through the washing machine at (laughs) least. They did, yes, and they were pressed and everything. But they were perfect. So my children wore mine, Uh and they wore Mary Perrin's. Yeah. And because they... Isn't that funny? They wear like pig iron. I mean, they're yeah. tough as nails. I mean, they really do. So I had no clue. And my mother is in a, is a big shopper. She always has been. Yeah. So her, where does she shop? Where did she shop? Uh, where didn't she shop? Well, as what? I said, she loved Elsa's in Charleston. Uh huh. Um, there were a couple stores in Savannah, and then Buford actually had iterations of really good ladies' stores. It had Wallace and Danner, uh-huh. which is long gone. And then it had the House of Foxbow. I love it. And, oh, I mean, it was major stuff. Foxbow, F O X B O W. Yeah, yeah, the House of Foxbow. I which was B O U G A. No, no, B O W. And it was in a really cool old house, Beaufort style house, which, dear listeners, are these, you know, houses that are two stories, mm-hmm. big porches on double layers to accommodate for the lack of air conditioning. Right. It was on the water and looked out on the water in Beaufort, and it was beautiful. And then after the House of Foxbow, there was Bay Fashions, which was also on a building that looked on the water. Oh, I love it. Are they still there? No, they're long gone. And then occasionally we would make the trek to Atlanta, which was just like the the Bataan death march for children. Right. I mean, it's (laughs) awful. (laughs) It's awful. It was. Terrible. Like, get in the car and drive for five hours so your mom can buy some clothes. Yeah, it still is kind of awful. Well, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's, 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 that's a lot to do. But so yeah. Atlanta every once in a while. And then she and her friends, like once York, in a blue they? moon, they'd be in New York and they go oh, yeah. shop in New York. And then we logged a lot of hours on King Street in Charleston. <laughs> and we logged a lot of hours in the covered part of Bob Ellis in front of their show windows. Right. We would take like <laughs> matchbox cars and stuff so we could play. <laughs> and mom would let us play, like basically on the street, you know, just. I'll be with you in a minute. And oh, then God. Mr. Kalinske needs to show me these shoes. Oh, you know? this, okay, Bob Ellis was just everything. I mean, it was just the most legendary, incredible and then store it, in the world. My so, grandmother shopped there. I mean, it was really, it was something. Yeah, it was a big, it's big doings. Yeah. And then people came from all over the country. We, we were in there years ago, and somebody said, well, I've got to send these to the First Lady. And I don't remember who was <laughs> who was in office at the time, but, yeah. it, I mean, you know, the First Lady of the United States was getting shoes from Charleston, South Carolina. And, you know, it started out as um, it was like a specialized shoe store. So it was for people that had really, really narrow feet or really, really small feet or really long feet or what, you know. And and Southerners typically are known for having very small and narrow feet. And I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is either. I don't either, but we do. We we, we must, you know, bind, bind them or I don't know. <laughs> but But that's how they started. And then, you know, it just became the best shoe store in the world. Yeah, well, we logged a lot of hours on the <laughs> on the on the bluestone covered porch of yeah. Bob Ellis. The, the terrazzo little, you, yeah. Well, it was bl- it's bluestone, it's it slate, uh, like the sidewalks yeah, in Charleston, right. and we would literally sit there. We come inside and we'd be like, "Mom, how much longer? <laughs> I'll be with you when I'm with you." You know that kind of thing. Yeah. And see, so, well, I can't believe I never met you there. As well, a child, <laughs> we probably were there at the same time. So there, and then, and also they had the best service in the world. I have never seen service like that. I mean, that taught me everything I and know. They, and, <laughs> and my mother, I don't I don't remember. If they were like nurses, you know, like they were just on you. Shoe like, triage. It was shoe <laughs> triage. It absolutely was. But they can't, they would come with box after box after, yeah. I don't like this. Oh, I have them in this color. Well, I don't like this. Well, That's too well, small. Well, that was one of the yeah. things too that you would say, I really like this. And they, you would show them one shoe that you liked and they came out with that, but also six other shoes. But Laura, how many pairs of ribbon Ferragamo oh. slippers does one woman need? Well, I, mean, I needed, I needed them in every color and... <laughs> 
I mean, my mom. <laughs> and I, I would get them at the junior league thrift shop. I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, I hope my mother lives another 70 years, but I mean. <laughs> what size shoe is she? I would love them. I have no clue. <laughs> no clue. But so, the, so it was Bob Ellis and then Elza's and then there was a store and then. Was the, there Papa Gallo too in Charleston? I don't know. I bet there, I'm sure I bet there, there was. was. There and was there was a Lily store. Yeah. I think. And then we would go to. Crawl checks for us, and then the boys' department was upstairs where Caleb Davis held court. He would be like, "Oh, hey, the Kelly boys are here. <laughs> hey, George. Hey, Yancey." And then did y'all get matching clothes? Who? No, no, that would have never have worked. No, 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 no. no, no. no. And then when we wanted casual clothes, we got to go to M. Dumas, which is right. still in business. And Miss Dumas would be there, and she would say, "Cash check a charge," <laughs> and um, with her cigarette dangling. And would your mom charge? She would charge it, and it, it like a charge account. Charge account. They would, yeah, account. They oh, would yeah. just send the bill to house Buford. account for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And then you could go there to get Levi's cords which, and uh, Duckhead, everything. Like Barber was not on the radar then, no, but no. now I mean, if you need, was it LL Bean or was it J Crew that jacket, the field jacket with the, the barn jacket, barn from, jacket. from LL Bean? Oh, yeah. that was so good. I don't. I've never had one of those out. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had one. I loved it. Yeah. So anyway, but those. Yeah, we spent a lot of time there. So my mother is a huge shopper. So we spent a lot of time. <laughs> but her sisters are huge shoppers. My grandmother. And she's one of three girls. Yeah. And so my maternal grandmother, she was not a huge shopper, but she always liked to look good. And yeah. we spent a lot of time with them, a lot of time with them. And she had this beautiful necklace that your eldest has. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's this gold watch. And the watch is long since broken, but she, yeah. Like a pocket watch. It's almost. like a pocket watch. It's the ladies' yeah. version of the men's pocket watch. That, and um, she, she left it to her eldest granddaughter. Which is Margaret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh. and Margaret wears it. And so, back to your early question about living in a house with girls and style, <laughs> I had no clue. I mean, yeah. there are lots of discussions about clothes. <laughs> there are lots of evenings with a laptop <laughs> yeah, oh, being yeah. being shoved my way. Dad, do you like this? Dad, do you like this? Does this look good? Does this look good? And also, what there's one of the biggest problems is they know you and they've right. been to your stores and they've seen things <laughs> oh. here and they're like. Do you think Laura, this looks like something Laura would w- would sell? You know, this looks like it came from Capital. And I'm like, well, no, it's true. I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's a little disconcerting. Also, I, have a, and I have a lot of dads that don't like me. <laughs> well, you know, and husbands. That, that's that would never be the case on our part. <laughs> and you know, their mother is Mary Perrin has a definite sense of what she likes to wear and how she likes to look. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's generally beyond put together. You yes. know, she's a yeah. snazzy dresser. Mm-hmm. I mean, she always looks good. Then her family are, are big shoppers. I mean, I yeah. don't know where where all this comes from. So, just, so well, it comes from you know, at Charl- I, a lot of it comes from Charleston. She's from Charleston. Charleston was is a is a real retail city. I mean, that was a real, it was an exciting place to shop, uh, probably for the last two hundred years. Well, and I, you that, know, yeah, they're merchants. I mean, it was it was a city of merchants and a city of you know. It was the f- market town for basically what were yeah. farms all around the low country. Exactly. And it was a city that did well. And yeah. when people start making a little money, they want to look a little better. Well, and you know, Capital is named after the market town in Fayetteville, which was the, it was the market town in eastern North Carolina that everybody all over eastern North Carolina would come and shop Fayette at now. the Capitol. It was called the Capitol. The Capitol in, yeah. in Fayetteville. Yeah, in, in Fayetteville, and it was on Market Street, but it was really something in its day. Yeah, and it and went out of business in the eighties or so, but it, it was there for probably seventy five years. Well, and so we people in Beaufort still. I mean, growing up, it's how you go into town. It meant are you going to Charleston? <laughs> right. You know, and one of my one of my favorite stories is a good friend of mine. We have another friend, and this good friend of mine. It's from Beaufort. He now lives in Charleston, too. But there's always been sort of a lot of cross-pollinization between Beaufort and Charleston. They're 70 miles away. Right. Lots of families have, you know, cousins in both places. Right. So my friend John was visiting one of his friends. And uh, this friend's mother is from the metropolis of Tarboro, North Carolina. Yeah, Tarboro. Yeah, I know. But um, <laughs> this lady said, and John, how do you find the city? <laughs> Meaning, you know, what, what do you think of being in the big city? And he looked at her and said, well, Miss So-and-so, aren't you from Tarboro? And she's like, be quiet, boy. You know, that, I mean, so there's always, you know, Charleston, we always thought it was a big deal uh, when it we were little, too. I mean, you know, I tell the story. When we would go to Jack Crawshacks, we were made to dress up. Oh, we yeah. couldn't show up in the aforementioned camper shorts and right. a T-shirt. You had to put on a button-down shirt. Camp shirt. No. no, not a camp shirt. An Oxford, an yeah, Oxford yeah, cloth yeah, yeah. button-down shirt, Khakis. and khaki pants, duck and heads. either duck heads or the Jack Crawcheck store right. brand. You know, B E R L E Burl was okay. the maker of them. Uh-huh. I think they're still in business. This is the company that makes 
Nantucket Reds, huh. which are actually made in Charleston, which huh. is funny. Really? Everybody thinks they're oh, you know, funny. from Nantucket. And then probably you wore... Um, Bass Weegians. Yeah, Bass That's Weegians. what we wore. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. Something came up about shoes. Somebody said something about men's shoes. And I was like, well, the only men's shoes we all wore were running shoes. Right. New bl- Balance. Bleachers uh, or uh, Nike, Nike. or b- yeah. n- uh, Nike. Zips. L- bean boots. <laughs> Zips. Zips were the best. So what's my first fashion memory? Zips. Zips, for sure, yeah. Zips were the first. I, <laughs> Thing you really wanted. The first aspirational yeah. <laughs> piece of clothing I ever wanted were Zips. So uh-huh. I could stand in the playground of the Blythewood Kindergarten in Beaufort and Make the Z. Do you remember the yeah, Z? Yeah. It's Zips, hard to zips the big Z. You, yeah. So you took both feet yes. and did basically parallel lines. Yes. And then you took your right yes. foot and made a diagonal line from the top of one to another yeah. to make the Z. It was on zips the commercial. The big Z. Zips the big Z. And <laughs> I mean, I, I begged for zips. Begged for <laughs> did zips. Did you get them? Yes. Because the, oh oh the other place we shopped in before, which was um oh, now this place was amazing. It was called Lipsits. And L I P S I T Z, let's uh-huh. it's department store, uh-huh. and they that's where we were fitted for shoes on King Street. No, this was in Beaufort. Oh, oh. the Lipsitz family had come over from either Lithuania or Latvia, hmm. and they to were escape, shoemakers. To, to, no, no, they weren't shoemakers. I mean, like this is the story of so many Jewish families that fled um, persecution in Russia mm-hmm. um, under the Tsar. They fled and they came to the south, and they were peddlers. Truly, like with the sack on their back peddling, and Max Lipsitz landed in Beaufort and opened a store, and it was in existence until maybe five or six years ago, well, ten years, maybe ten years ago. But but the children didn't want to take it over. No, the children had taken it over. The grandchildren, but the grandchildren, and the great grandchildren had taken it over. But Beaufort's economy has completely changed. Yeah. They're tourist galore, and mm-hmm. so they could get more money renting it or selling the building mm. than they could operating the department store. But that's why Jack Kochex is no longer in existence mm-hmm. in Charleston. Bob and Ellis. El- and Elza's and Bob Ellis. You can get more. Yeah. Selling so the building. Selling that's the building. Unbelievable. But um, Lipsitz was great. If you needed pajamas <laughs> that when my brother, when my youngest brother had surgery one time and he had a, sur- it was on his head or on his ear. Uh-huh. And so he couldn't wear pajamas that went over his head. Okay. So mom called Mr. Lipsitz. <laughs> And said, do you have any pajamas that just button down the front? And he said, oh, I'm sure I got some in a drawer. So we went, we, you know, went down to Lipsitz and he pulled open a drawer. And there were these, they had these huge golden oak wooden cabinets that uh-huh. they kept things in. And, I mean, what happened to those? I don't know. I wish I had been yeah, able to buy them. Buy them. <laughs> so he pulled open, he knew exactly where, he pulled open a drawer and it said $1.25. <laughs> And they were from, like, the 60s. Wow. And so mom said, Mr. Lipset, but she called him Josie. She's like, Josie, what? I mean, how much do I owe you? And she said, well, it's $1.25. And he, <laughs> he said, but it's, they, they can't. He said, he said <laughs> 20 years later. Uh, 20, 20 years later, he charged her $1.25. I love it. And they, and they buttoned, and he wore them, you know, while he was recuperating from this. Were they cotton or flannel? Yeah, they were cotton. cotton, cotton and it. they had shorts. <laughs> I mean, I kind of wear the similar ones from Brooks Brothers today. <laughs> My dad does, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best thing about Lipsitz was it had a minor bird. Named Lippy. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh huh. In is a is a little bird, and you would go in and talk to Lippy while you were waiting your turn to be fitted for your shoes. Really? Uh huh. And then after you, you got you got to talk to Lippy, and then Miss <laughs> Rabinowitz, who is Mister Lipsitz's sister, uh-huh. her she had long skinny bony fingers, but she would tie the tightest knots in your shoes. <laughs> And you would, of course, wear them out of the store because that's what you, but oh, you. Yeah. But we'd get home and you'd have to undo them because the knots. And you couldn't get it you, We were killing your circulation. <laughs> but so as you went through your golden goose egg, do you remember golden goose shoes? Yes. Was that a thing here in well, Charlotte? No, it was a golden goose. It was golden goose well, eggs. and really? you, uh, Golden goose shoes. And you the got origin, a, Like before the Italian version now. Oh, yeah. Those, those are yeah. Those <laughs> rather pricey shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were golden goose shoes, and you got a plastic golden egg. Yes. It was I, like a Cracker Jack I box. I definitely remember that. And it was filled with, like, trinkets and yeah. toys. Yeah. So you'd have to, while you, while you were going through your golden goose when you got home, your mom or dad had to undo the Miss, so Miss Ethel, as we called her, Miss Ethel Rabinowitz's knots in your shoes because they were cutting off the oh circulation. Oh, my God, I love it. You would have loved her. She was, she was, now, she was a very fixy lady. I mean, she, but <laughs> there she was on her knees, you know, b- I love a fixie lady. What's a fixie lady? So fixie is a term. That's maybe that's just a term my family uses. But I mean, people, <laughs> ladies who are fixie have their makeup done and they have their hair done and they're you know wearing their <laughs> matching sweater sets and their you know oh, their am suits. I, I'm not fi- am I fixie? No. No, because I'm not. You you still are imbued. I'm still a bitch in boys' clothes. <laughs> no, I would never say that. You're still imbued with the same 
preppy sensibility <laughs> with a little deadhead thrown in. From, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of deadhead. A lot of deadhead from a few years we spent together <laughs> on a hill in Massachusetts. I love it. I mean, but I mean, you know, that did sort of play into the yeah the well, style I, choices that I still make today and that you probably still make. Well, I know, huh, I well, know you still totally. Make it. Well, I mean, I think that I think that every every morning when I wake up, I have little bits of all of those parts of my life. Like I, I loved those beautiful babysitters I had. You know, in the 70s and 80s, they all wore the blue suede clogs. So I love clogs because of my babysitters when I was little. Definitely the deadhead parts. Um, all these little, all the parts of your life kind of, it, and for me, it, I'm so nostalgic. Like every day has one, a little bit of that um, when I get dressed. Well, for me, that not what so is yours? not so much with that. You have a little still, citadel. You have no, a little no, neck. it's it's still pretty much the uniform and like it's the, your it's your high school deadhead. Eh, it's it's preppy. and there are, it's the more of the the preppy side of it is still there, but occasionally. So the only wild choice I get to make is like with a tie, you know, something crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, and the tie will have a little something, sort of a wink and nod on it. You I know? love it. You know, but nothing. I mean, nothing too outlandish because because you're not outlandish. I'm outlandish in some respects. I mean, I'm <laughs> bonkers crazy, as you well know, in some respects. But, you know, going to court, you don't want to be noticed. You, right. You, you're not the story. Right. You're, it's your client. It's it's what the tale you're trying to get across to the judge or the jury. Yeah. Y- the, it's sort of like going to a wedding. Like we were talking recently about a young lady's outfit at a wedding. It's like a Southern thing, I think. I don't know if people in other parts of the country know that, that it's really not polite to wear something that stands out too much at somebody else's wedding. You want to look it's good, not but your it's, day. it's the bride and groom's day. Yeah, you just don't do that. Like, you never wear white to somebody else's wedding, obviously. But you don't wear something too noticeable. It's not about you. Right, yeah. right. I'll, I mean, <laughs> yeah, completely. That's something that's falling away rapidly as well. Another story. Yes. So this is this is a funny story about you and manners. Do you, you, do you remember? No. Your, <laughs> I don't remember my manners. This is our... So... <laughs> so Andover, we call the classes differently. When you're in the ninth grade, you're a junior. Uh-huh. Tenth grade, you're a lower. Eleventh grade, you're an upper. And uh-huh. then a senior is still a senior. Okay. So it was our upper year. Mm-hmm. And there's the beginning of school. And we bought our books at this wonderful old yeah. bookstore called the Andover Every Bookstore. bookstore. Yeah. And it was fabulous. It had a creaky old wood floors. They had a fireplace. They always put out like store-bought Amway cookies. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And had a pot of a kettle of tea on. A constant comment. Constant comment by Bigelow. <laughs> I mean, I love that place. So to buy our books, we went upstairs uh-huh. and across you a the charge l- account. You charge it to your parents, and then you you step down. Uh-huh. And the ladies who were so New Englandy with their spectacles on chains <laughs> and their sweaters literally on their shoulders, right. could, yeah, yeah, you would give them your class list, and you and I, w- I we ended up there at the same time buying our books on the first day because you walked down the hill right you got your schedule and walked down the hill and then trudged them back up the hill i mean who that, i mean no wonder <laughs> we were all hardcore, yeah. no wonder we were all achingly thin because <laughs> we were we walked everywhere and we were you know yeah no it it. <laughs> up and down so we go upstairs and we were talking about something you gave the lady your list and i was giving her my list and you the lady said um, something about an english class and you said yes ma'am and the lady turned <laughs> And she said, did you just say yes, ma'am, to me? And you said, well, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I did. <laughs> and I was waiting for the other shoot it up. She said, never stop that. Oh, really? Yeah, and she said, we never get that from the New England children. Well, it's funny because my first memory probably at Andover actually is in the first week of school I was there. And I told a teacher, yes, sir. And he said, he said the same. He said, what did you say? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, don't say that again. Oh, he said, don't, he versus, said, don't say that again. That's what the rude. Lady at the That's rude. Said. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I was like, well, it's not rude where I'm from. And he said, well, don't do, don't say that again. Well, so I, I guess I didn't listen to him. <laughs> I, I met my very first Andover memory since we're talking about that. Since, yes. You know, this has turned into a walk down memory lane <laughs> instead of about clothing and stuff <laughs> we pulled up in the in the wood panel station wagon with the south carolina <laughs> plates and the dean of our cluster which i've described showed up and was welcoming us and it was henry wilmer who was from north carolina right. and he jumped and my mother asked him a question he said yes ma'am to her and i said okay i'll be fine <laughs> so i mean he was one of the leaders of our school so, so confusing so confusing <laughs> so that's i mean so it's you know, you got to know your audience, right? Yeah, you got to know your audience, but also Southerners, again, like they know who they are, I think, and they don't, I don't think we forget. I hope we don't. No, and it took, he, it took time for me to, I mean, I had to get out. I had to go. Right, I couldn't, same. St- couldn't be here. <laughs> I was much too cool, much too smart. You got to <laughs> spread my wings. 
but it was only in leaving that I've got to appreciate what we what we have. Absolutely. Hamlin, we asked everybody on this podcast one question: What did you wear to the prom? Oh well, that's easy. <laughs> it was it was. And so, what did your date wear? Do you remember that? Yes, she wore it. <laughs> Laura she wore Ashley. a Laura Ashley. I wore Laura Ashley too. Everyone wore Laura <laughs> Ashley. That no nobody, nobody at the prom we attended. I actually went our upper year and our senior same year. Same here. year, yeah, because we were so cool. <laughs> oh, she got invited as an upper year. I was, think I went as a lower too. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Um, <laughs> golly, Pete, the girls at, in the late '80s that went to Andover did not wear ball dresses y'all weren't in prom dresses y'all were like in cocktail dresses right. and like lots of laura ashley so yeah, there my, was not a sequin or a so i don't remember i know who i went with both years upper year it was someone wore a laura ashley <laughs> cocktail dress uh-huh. like with prints and flowers okay. and then senior year it was almost the same dress but with <laughs> The p- colors were just a little That's different. That's hilarious. And what I wore was a tuxedo both years that we yeah. everyone stood in line in the entry hall to Commons and got fitted in the entry hall from a tuxedo rental place in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Really? Yeah, in Lawrence. I wish just over the, the river. End. Yeah. Right. No, the Andover <laughs> shop did not rent tuxedos. Right. You could buy, you could buy a them, tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> when did you buy your first tuxedo, by the way? Freshman year of college. Yeah, and you still wear it. it still fits. No, that one doesn't. That one. <laughs> that one doesn't. That one I outgrew, and then I bought another. I'm on my third. I bet. I bet it would fit you now. I no, bet it's too no, big. no. The but then I had to buy another one, and then I undergrew that one luckily, <laughs> and just bought another one like in the last year and a half. I love it. Um, but yeah, a tuxedo with a simple. Uh, Are you a shawl collar guy? I think those were notch collars in high school. Uh huh. My first one was a shawl collar, second one was shawl collar, and now I'm back to the notch. Notched. Yeah, so what I wore to prom was the tuxedo, and I do remember, this is funny, because Rob Vermillion, who was one of our classmates, looked at me and said, you know how to do cufflinks, don't you? He just, and I said, of course, I knew how to do cufflinks. He goes, you know, I'm going to have to show half my dorm how to do cufflinks. <laughs> and it was, I mean, he and Rob is, you know, still one of our great friends, but right. I mean, it was just funny because he was like, you oh, Hamlin. You seem like the kind of guy that would know. Kind of know how to do a cufflink. And my dad had shown me for years, yeah. like, just, come here, boys, this is the way you put your cuffs on, this is what you <laughs> By do. yourself. Yeah, by yourself, because... Yeah. None of us are. You, know. you didn't. Well, I mean, and you didn't. Your date wasn't at your room getting ready. Well, that and you know the days of taking a manservant to school with you were long, were long gone. You know, and my valet didn't accompany me to Oxford. You right. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you, Hamlin. Thanks, Laura. What we wore is produced by Capital and Balto Creative Media. The original song, "Someone So Enchanting." was composed and performed by Britt Drazda. What We Wore is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. Find out more at queencitypodcastnetwork.com.